everybody for this. I don't know how many coffee we did, <laughs> but for this new cafe talk uh, about agriculture and carbon. So I will let Olan just and present uh, the topic for today. Uh, just uh, we are recording the session. Uh, so all the session will be available on our YouTube channel if you want more details. And for new people, so just read it more. Uh, it's a, a European project, uh, 2020. Uh, we are working on uh, identifying new business cases uh, and business model for rural areas uh, about on food, uh, bioeconomy or bio-based value chain and ecosystem services. So with new, new business model and training and tools uh, to help you to develop new solutions. So you have everything on our website. And so this cycle uh, is more about carbon and agriculture. So we already talked about carbon neutrality and we had uh, last week um, a virtual visit on ecosystem services. So today you have just an Ola. And next week uh, we will talk about uh, biochar more specifically. So you can also join us. Uh, next week and we have a new cycle uh, in May about uh, business new business model uh, and some uh, example for from new other European projects so you are also welcome and I'll let you just uh, I'll let you just uh. thank you Kami uh, and yeah thank you for the opportunity to to present so my name is Justin Casimir uh, together with my colleague Ula Peteshon, we will uh, give you a really quick talk on the, the different fossil free energy system in agriculture, uh, what is there and, and what is coming. Um, really a brief context, so these numbers are, uh, I think, are for Sweden, um, but I think they are quite similar in terms of percentage, at least. Uh, this is the, the climate impact, so the, the greenhouse gas emissions uh, for different sectors. So we have transport and industry being about half of it. And in, in um, orange, pink, 17% uh, is the agriculture. And then when we go in, in the bar, we can see that, well, the emissions are, come from the soil, using the soil or from animal uh, production. But then there's also a part that comes from direct energy use, so uh, the use of diesel and heating oil, and, and that's about 9% of the, the greenhouse gas emissions in agriculture. And this, of course, depends on the countries. Uh, it's just to give you a rough, rough idea of what we spoke about today. If we look at the different energy systems, the, the energy use in agriculture, so taking into account the, the fuel, so for your tractor, uh, then heating, so that you have oil or biomass to heat, and then electricity. Um, that's what we take into account. So we see that, again, this is for Sweden, about half of the energy used is um, used by the crop agriculture, so cereals, and in this one, most of it, if not all, is uh, fuels for <coughs> tractors. Uh, then, of course, there's some drying as well. Then we have the animal production uh, and the same. This is more mixed of maybe heating for the building and uh, the tractor for producing feed and fodder. And then we have the horticulture and greenhouses. Mostly, it's mostly heating of the greenhouses when they have this uh, and a bit of uh, fuel as well for the machinery. So... This is what we will go through today. And I leave the floor to Ula that will. Yes, hello, my name is Ula Pettersson. And I'm a colleague to Justin and I'm working at RISE in Uppsala. And my task is, uh, I am a machine engineer and I'm working with agriculture machines on fields. And I daily working with the problem that how do we fuel these machines with the bioenergy when we have to reduce the fossil fuel. And that's a quite big task today. We all have demands from, from the customers and we have demands from, from the government. 
we must reduce the fossil, fossil energy use in the agriculture. And what possibilities do we have today? What is possible to drive today? And we're also going to describe a little what comes tomorrow, what is the future. And uh, we have picked some, some energy sources here. There are some others, sources, but uh, they are not so common. We talk about what's more in the pipeline. And so what we have today, uh, that is uh, some bio, biofuels. We have Pharma, we have RME, and we have HVO. We can talk a little mo more about them. Uh, if you describe what is Pharma and what is RME, Pharma is called fatty acid methyl ester, and it's based on different oil crops like soya, corn, palm, rapeseed, and so other. There is a standard for that in Europe for pharma to use in uh, engines. And RME is in fact a type of pharma. It's a, a sort of a breeding from pharma. It's a pharma produced ex exclusive on rapeseed oil. And uh, that it's the, the uh, that is the oil that will make the best fuel for the engines, I think. It's the most quality fuel. So it's that's the reason why it's the most common, especially in the northern part of Europe, because it has much better cold. Uh, it's a, it's a better to use in cold climate. But uh, the raw materials for these types of oils, bio oils, is uh, quite complicated because it competes with the food production on fields and it's, uh, it's a little bit limited also. It's not the solution for the future. It's just a part of the solution. Uh, it could be some problems to drive it in, in tractors and engines because it's a a strong cleaning effect in the fuel system and, and the gas tanks. Uh, so if you have run for fossil fuel diesel a long time before, that would produce much dirt in the systems that if you start to use farm and RME, it starts to cleaning up this dirt and it will affect uh, diesel fuel filters, for as an example. So to we went over to this farm and army, you need to know how to handle it. It's quite, it's easier to do it from the first start of the engine. And for the northern countries, there is army with a quite uh, much more closer uh, limited for the, the quality just to reach the cold climate uh, effects. You can run, run RME in Sweden down to minus 25, minus 30 degrees, with no problems, depending that much lower contest of water as an example and some other aspects also. You can shift, Shastan. HVU is another type of biofuel. Uh, the producers will say it's not a bio oil, it's a green diesel fuel because it's, it's uh, nearly identical in the molecule structure as diesel fuel. It's uh, like diesel without the dirt, you can say. It's a very clean diesel, it's, it's uh, very healthy for the engines and it's quite uh, well known in in our countries. So I think Sweden is one of the countries that use HVU most. And it's, there is no problem to use it in engines today. It's likely the same as uh, diesel fuels. Uh, but it's, 
quite limited availability for the raw materials. That's a big problem. If everyone goes a quick shift to HVU, there it's, it will not uh, re remain. Uh, there are some discussions of the raw materials because in the beginning it was uh, it uh, was fed with palm oil. That's not political correct. But uh, the producers today of HVO in the they will hand out that it's there is no more palm oil, oil in it. It's uh, produced from residue oils from the food production example is animal fat and vegetable fat in the residual oils. But uh, we must look, look wider where, what more, what more uh, raw material can we use in production of HVO. But uh, what's coming around the corner tomorrow we can discuss. There's a lot of project regarding electric driven agriculture machines today. We already have small machines. Uh, both Justin and I have worked with small wheel loaders in the agriculture that run for battery. But uh, we can also see there hybrid machines with both diesel engines and battery. But we also see machines with 100% electric driven by battery. There's also discussion about connected with cable to the net, to the grid. Quite difficult, but it's possible, yes. We can also see electric machine that uh, were fueled with hydrogen. They will be coming, I think. There are some uh, upturns with uh, electric because you can control the transmission in a very good way to reduce energy losses. You can have split the engine in several engines and just run what's necessary for the moment as uh, hydra hydraulic pumps, power takes off and so, so on. You can also use local produced energy if you have electric produce at the farm. The outcomes also that you have reduced noise at the local part and uh, you reduce air pollution locally. So There's many up, upturns with electric machines. And I think they were coming more and more in for bigger and bigger machines, but there are also problems with energy stores have quite heavy and wide battery today. There is this little spreadsheet over machines we have today. We have small wheel loaders I will mention. There are robot machines and we have we have also unmanned machines. That is a very upcoming today autonomic machines without the driver. There's a lot of discussion for that today and that they will be much better for battery and, and electric driven because they can load, load their batteries when it's needed. Biogas can we talk about? Uh, we all know that biogas uh, there are today for personal cars and for buses in this cities, but not so common in our culture, depending on the difference in, in the engines. There are some problems with, uh, with the exhaust emission requirements, for, as an example. And most of the engines in the culture are diesel engines, and diesel engines are quite difficult to, to to uh, rebuild for biogas drift because it's quite common that the methane gas will slip through the engines and out in the exhaust pipe. And that's, that's a problem because methane is quite a heavy, uh, say, climate 
destroyer if it will come out. But uh, biogas is common that will be produced in the farms from the manure as an example. So if, if you can produce engines that were built from start for biogas, probably with the spark plugs and auto engines, it will be more and more common in the, in the agriculture. There are some problems with energy stores because you have quite big biogas tanks with you. So the driving range is quite limited with biogas. You have to have that in mind also. We can shift. Uh, hydrogen, they will driven electrical machines by fuel cells probably. And we see what's happened in the on-road traffic with heavy trucks and, and uh, other type of working machines. It will become the future in the agriculture also I'm sure about. And there's a lot of projects work going on today with hydrogen fuel, fuel cells in agriculture machines. Uh, the difference between battery stored machines is that you can load them uh, with the same speed as your fuel, diesel fuels. And uh, you can have more energy store with you in uh, relation to, to battery stores. And you can produce hydrogen on farms in a green way if you have green electricity. I think that is the future for the agriculture. You can shift, Shostan. Yeah. Uh, take, take a uh, word uh, there, Shostan. Yes, it's my turn. Uh, this is just a, a graph to show you the, the climate impact or uh, the redu reduction of the impact. Uh, so if we look for agriculture, we, we should look at the, the diesel and biodiesel. Uh, on the left, you have diesel, how it looks. Uh, so in green, it's what it emits at the, you know, just outside the tractor. And then if you include the production of the, and the transport of the, of the fuel, then it, you, you get a bit higher volume. So I think even just by uh, including this um, HVO or FA uh, to the to the diesel could also reduce um, slightly the, the emissions. But then if we look at uh, FAME or HVO, um, well, we, we'll, the, the emission at the tractor are uh, eventually zero because it's a biological process. Uh, so you emit bio uh, carbon that has been stored um, recently. Uh, and then we, we looked at other, so the electricity and biogas, they are on the, the side because we had to like rework the, the units to make them comparable to, to the, first, um, the first graph. So if we look um, at the electricity, it is virtually zero using the, because we, we took the hypothesis that we use a Nordic electric mix. Uh, there's a, a, a small uh, emissions, but you can see this on the graph. And this is because electric engines are really efficient. And then depending where you source your electricity from, uh, then we can see biogas has also a really low um, emission factor. Maybe, there you go. Uh, Electricity in uh, agriculture is nothing new. 100 years ago, uh, this picture on the left, it was actually in Uppsala, in Ultuna, just behind here. Uh, they were trying these cable uh, powered tractors. And I think because of, well, this is my own opinion that low cost of, uh, of uh, fuels, then we easily went to uh, diesel or oil tractors. Uh, but this was happening 100 years ago, and this is happening today. So we have a, a test bed in, in Uppsala in Sweden, looking at uh, digitalized and fossil free agri agriculture. So we really hope that this was only a, a hundred years long parenthesis with fossil fuel and 
try to yeah, get uh, agriculture fossil free again, if I dare to say. So yes, thank you for your attention.